Now, I've been fortunate enough to be around some pretty bespoke cars in my time, but never have I seen a feature <laughs> like this. So the clock in this car actually rewinds time. It's the only way I could ex express it, really. The clock goes backwards. The only way I can demonstrate this is by pressing this button, and sure enough, we're going back in the future here. It's, <laughs> it's pretty, look at that. We have a backwards clock in here. You know that saying of uh, going out for a drive and getting the wind in your hair? Well, I've had some pretty stunning driving experiences of late, but this epitomizes the quintessential lightweight British sports car, top down, wind in your hair, going for a drive just for the sake of going for a drive. And welcome to the Frontline Developments MGB, and this is where things get exciting, V8. Now this thing, Let's just uh, touch on its characteristics before we uh, immerse you in what it's like to drive. But honestly, the beauty of the Resto Mod series, and this car epitomizes basically all of this, is size, weight, power, beauty in important balance and equal measure. So this car, it's very small. We find ourselves conveniently on a uh, beautiful, windy British B road. So as you're threading it through these towns and villages, not only is it uh, greatly welcomed by people who just so happen to be walking through the village, there's a lot of uh, like-minded acknowledgement that you're in something cute and quite special. But also, it's small, it's compact. So as I'm threading through cars parked on the side of what is effectively a a 600 year old village that was certainly planned for horse and carts, not for big supercars. I mean, I've driven this exact stretch of road quite a few times. I mean, I've got a tractor coming past me right now. And for the first time in a long time, I'm not having to breathe in and hope for the best. I'm just able to swan on through gracefully. And then when cyclists see me, they're not annoyed at my exhaust system because the client of this car has had it developed to his specific wish to sound fruity but not obnoxious and they've done a great job of that despite the fact that it has a 350 horsepower v8 sat in the front here but it's also light in its v8 format this car is weighing just 960 kilograms those are not figures that even enter the realms of modern day performance cars and with 350 horsepower little weight light narrow body when you drop cog in this thing <laughs> well i'm sure you can see by the state of my hair <laughs> this thing does not hang around oh the pedal placement the heavy box because it's oh developing so much more horsepower than an mgb should ever be capable of developing this car is everything that the Resto Mod series is all about. Taking a beautiful icon and improving and reimagining areas which, uh, let's not beat around the bush. Original MGBs, I mean, MGBs actually weren't that bad. It was the MGCs which were C for, well, you interpret what the C was for, but it was C for compromised handling. Um, this car, everything has been redeveloped, suspension tweaks, I'm on a stretch of road I know all too well, and the road surface here is, for want of a better word, absolutely diabolical. And this thing is riding it gracefully. Uprated five-speed Tremec gearbox. And it's got such a heavy but positive throw about it. So when you're interacting with it, every engagement really feels like you're doing something. You're interacting with it. But what's interesting about this car is because it's packing a 350 horsepower V8, um, it backs it up with right foot smile inducing behaviors like so <laughs> and when it gets up when it builds up on that cam you can see straight away it's like the engine's directly connected to my smile glands they are intrinsically linked you drop cog and all of a sudden you see the width of your mouth begins to articulate <laughs> as the valves open up it's just a fabulous little thing i will say that these seats when I say have been developed for the 
customer have quite literally been sculpted and contoured for the requirements of the owner of this car, which I think that's something else when it comes to a resto mod. It doesn't have to be true to the authenticity of the original car. You can tweak it how you want. You can do whatever you want. Now, while this thing has retained a lot of the authenticity of an MGB, you know, it only takes a few hundred yards to realize that this, quite frankly, is not an MGB. <laughs> it's a completely different beast. It's got beautiful calibration of power steering, yet there's still a lovely weight to it. I'm actually sat right now in, would you believe it, heated seats. What it has retained is the character, but what it has evolved is the dynamics of it. Like, you're not afraid to throw this thing into a corner. The load that you can put through it before it lets go. And when it does let go, it lets go in a friendly way. It's so nice. On oh, a day like today, pretty special place to be. All right, so we're back at the bunker. Now, if you've watched the Resto Mod series before, you'll know that we typically start in here first, give you a walk and talk of all of the sexy bits, and then take you out for a drive. However, um, I felt it quite important to go out in this thing first because I was assured by frontline developments that this is not your standard MG. And I can confidently tell you, as you've just seen by the onboard, uh, this thing's in its own world. It's, it's a completely different experience. But now you've seen the drive, um, I think what I'm about to show you will unfold um, a completely different appreciation of what this car and what this company is all about because it's not until you quite literally get under the hood of th this thing that it paints an entirely different picture. But just quickly uh, to recap from the start, um, 4.1 litre V8, uh, beautiful naturally aspirated tone. Uh, this particular car is running 350 brake horsepower, uh, but Frontline tell me they're capable of over 500 horsepower. Um, in this particular setup, it's weighing 960 kilograms. Uh, to try and convey that power to weight is quite hard, but if you rewind, you'll see what the grin on my face was doing at that point. And this thing only has 350, I should say only. It's absolutely incredible. Uh, this car is built more of a sort of GT profile of drive. So even though it's got plenty of legs, what's phenomenal about it is how much torque it's got. And because it's so lightweight, everything about it is so effortless. And that fifth drive is a, is a sort of much longer geared GT gear. So once you uh, cross over into the continent and you want to get on those auto routes, it's a much more of a sort of easy, effortless drive. Anyway, let's open up this hood and show you the engine. And then we'll show you the particular details which have been quite literally personalized to this car. Because once the story of this unfolds, and even details on the color, details in the boot, some really intrinsic things here. Okay, so we're gonna reach in here. This is where you open the bonnet, close this. So, check this thing out. You're not gonna believe what's under here. If, you've, if you're familiar with the, uh, the engine bay of, a, of an MGB, you'll appreciate how this thing looks now. It's absolutely remarkable. I think one thing I would say before we dive into the significance of this engine is for me, this gold paint and this engine bay here acts as a frame for, as far as I'm concerned, a piece of artwork. It's absolutely stunning. I mean, the car as it sits is kind of in our lounge here and I just rock it like that. <laughs> it, it looks so beautiful. So what we like to do on this channel, as the audience uh, likes to uh, joke with me about quite regularly, is to set a spot of context. Now, what is amazing about this is just the plenum here, the headers, the machining of this takes an entire week just for this section here. And I think when we start to set context about components like that, it makes you look at the entire car differently, every component. For example, the bodywork, over 300 hours in the body, not the chassis or anything like that, just the body before the paintwork. So these guys put so much man hours, care, attention, and detail into things. Now, speaking of detail, you might look in this engine bay and go, why does this look so good? It's not just because it's shiny. Um, you'll notice a complete lack of pipes, tubes, wires. Frontline have uh, something called a deadhead fuel system that effectively allows them to tuck anything that would otherwise be exposed in a conventional car underneath around the back so you don't see it. So when you stare in here, it's just beautiful polished V8 goodness. And because I've driven it first, you don't need to take my word from it. You've heard this thing, you've seen how it pulls. It looks as great as it goes and it looks bloody good. Okay, so speaking of custom, 
There's no such thing as an off-the-shelf frontline developments, MG, MGB. Um, no more has there been a more prominent example than the paintwork on this car. And I'm not sure if the camera's doing it justice, uh, but it has this sort of stunning gold fleck in it. It wasn't until it was pointed out to me that this is actually the color of the client's Stratocaster guitar. And when you see the overall theme of this, I mean, it even follows through look and onto the dashboard, which is super cool. In here, this storage unit here is lined with the same color and material as the guitar box that his Stratocaster sits in, which is very, very cool. And it doesn't stop there. The same lining is on the inside as well of the boot. Look at that. Isn't that cool? And I think it's not until these details are pointed out to you that you realize when Frontline say this is a, a custom build or a bespoke project, it's on a different level. <laughs> if you say, actually, I would like the same interior as my guitar case in my boot and the paint on my dashboard, very cool indeed. You'll also notice MGBs generally don't rock sound systems like that. <laughs> so you can really build these things as you want. All right, let's jump back into the interior. It's such a beautiful place to be. It's funny that it fits me so well because these seats have quite literally been custom made to the client. What I mean by that is he sat in the seat for several hours and had it molded and fitted specifically to his derriere. So seems like mine and his aren't far off actually, but uh, it's a beautiful place to be. But now I've uh, been able to sit in the car while it's stationary, you can really take on board all of the minute attention to detail, including this white wheel here. Now the actual steering wheel itself is off the original car. So this is a 60s wheel, but this white taping here is handlebar tape for bicycles. <laughs> so this was actually supplied by the client themselves. So this is the level you can go to. Basically, if you can think of it and it's achievable, Frontline will do it for you. Not that this is a big thing, but I really like that he specifically wanted bike tape on, on his wheel. There's something about it as well. I just think it seems to work. And while the majority of this car is pretty much ground up, fresh nuts and bolts, they also have a 60s gear shifter here. And I think it's added that lovely touch of original authenticity about it. It's very cool. Now, I've been fortunate enough to be around some pretty bespoke cars in my time, but never have I seen a feature <laughs> like this. So the clock in this car actually rewinds time. It's the only way I could ex express it, really. The clock goes backwards. But the only way I can demonstrate this is by pressing this button. And sure enough, we're going back in the future here. It's, <laughs> it's pretty, look at that. We have a backwards clock in here. Story goes, client has one in his other car and quite liked it. So. Here we are. When I said Frontline will do anything for you, they will do anything for you. Isn't that nuts? <laughs> it's quite cool. Uh, also, you might have noticed that the belts too have been incredibly well matched uh, to the shade of the leather. And it's not until you start pointing out all of these subtle things or not so subtle things that, um, yeah, it paints a completely different picture of the uh, options of available on these cars. All right, that's it. Uh, big thank you to Frontline Developments for bringing this beautiful car down. Uh, hopefully we're gonna stop by their shop in the coming weeks and uh, give you guys a walk and talk of the am amazing amount of work that goes into these things. So if you have any questions, leave it in the comments below. As always, thanks so much for watching. And I shall see you next time. Ciao.